Okay, yesterday we have talked about uh, geodesy. I give you some uh, uh, basic knowledge on uh, the science and uh, give you some definition about what, uh, uh, what is a, a uh, the, the focus of the geodesy. We want to study the figures as a gravity field of the Earth and its variation over time. For the gravity field we have uh, seen some bad definition of what is a gravity field of the Earth. So that is the <coughs> it's given by the gravitational uh, field plus the centrifugal field. And uh, we have seen that um, is important in the definition of a reference surface called geoid and this surface is related to is the equipotential surface of the gravity field that approximates the mean sea level of the ocean and this surface is extended under the, the continent part of the earth and uh, we have seen that uh, uh, when we have uh, gravity data, usually we, we have to compute some what we call an gravity anomalies and we, that are reduction uh, that uh, uh, are used to simplify our computation. The first reduction is a gravity anomaly when I compute the differences between the gravity and the normal potential, uh, normal gravity. And we have seen that in Especially, especially for um, geophysical study, we need another type of the anomaly, that is a bouquet anomaly. And uh, all the things about uh, the computation of the bouquet anomaly, the cor theorem correction and so on, and the problem related to isostatic, uh, iso uh, isostatic problem correction. Okay, so we, we have seen also some uh, <coughs> Gravity satellite mission the, that are very important uh, now in nowadays, and now we are starting to see um, another category of the geodesy, space geodesy. We use space geodesy for positioning, and I'm going to discuss positioning in the last part of the course. You you will uh, see also uh, insert technique. But now, we, uh, from now, we, we started to see what is positioning. Okay, in the poni positioning class, there are different techniques. There is a GNS technique, that means Global Navigation Satellite System. We are going to see Global <coughs> Navigation Satellite System. Sorry for the chalk. GPS is a global is a one of the global navigation satellite system. Now, nowadays, we have different uh, global navigation satellite systems. So we, co we speak about GNSS. We have, for instance, we are going to see Galileo for the European Space Agency, but we have also, in the, from the past, GLONASS, a uh, other positioning system, satellite positioning system. Uh, so now we, we don't speak about GPS but GNS because we can have just one uh, instrument, one receiver able to, to record the data coming from different navigation systems. So we call this GNSS and um, okay, often we, we use just the term GPS because it's the most use the techniques because it is a, it's a full complete system uh, is a working for, uh, by uh, the, uh, by the 19th uh, the end of the 18 80 years so uh, we have we are using GPS for 30 years so it's very 
stable system. And in the positioning, we can obtain positioning using also different techniques, GNS, SLR, satellite laser ranging, or VLBI. We are going to, to see, uh, to present these techniques. What is the difference between, okay, positioning, we have seen yesterday the introduction of the course. The problem of the positioning is a, a very old problem. The humanity needs to know uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the position also in the past for navigation, for mapping and so on. So uh, before uh, the um, satellite geodesy, um, the posi positioning, positioning will be obtained, uh, okay, looking at the stars, for instance, in navigation, but uh, also uh, performing measure on the Earth um, using traditional uh, instruments like theodolite or leveling, uh, spirit leveling. And um, the difference uh, in uh, a traditional techniques and uh, in, a, in a modern technique like uh, based on uh, geodetic space geodetic methods, okay, is given by the instrument satellite or not. But uh, the really different, uh, the true differences is that uh, in, uh, in the traditional techniques that now are also very modern instrument, we need the sign of, we, we have to see what we want to measure. So we, we the network require, require line of sign. That is means that if I put my instrument here and uh, I need to, I want to do a measure, for instance, the measure of the angles, between one point to another point, I have to see the other point with my instrument. So uh, it's not a global technique, it means that um, it's a, um, I can uh, use this in a shorter, in a short range, up to, uh, up to, um, the distance that I can see what I want to measure. With the global navigation system, we don't need a um, line of sight between point on the hertz, but we need to see the satellite, to receive signals from the satellites. So we can connect using GPS a very far point that you cannot see this point, but it's important that they can see the satellite. So it became a global positioning system because all over the world I can use these techniques. The only requirement is to see the satellite. Uh, or celestial object or satellites for the hazard two techniques for a laser range or VLBI, of course. Uh, just, the, just this slide to see the old instrument and uh, uh, one uh, another important difference is with the traditional topographic survey instrument, we separate the planimetric definition of uh, a point and its uh, altimetric definition. So the, the planimetric is uh, separate from the height. It's uh, really separate because we use different instruments. When I measure, uh, for instance, the differences, <coughs> the differences in the height between two points, I can just me measure, do this measure. Not, uh, I don't have uh, any other information about the planimetric uh, uh, positioning of these two points. So this is a spirit leveling. So we are going to, to measure the differences in the height between the two points. And this uh, the, uh, height are given, are referred to the geoid. Because when we put our instrument, uh, I don't know if you have uh, seen this type of instrument. Uh, uh, data from um, 
Lavini are of, often used also in uh, geophysical application, not only in uh, engineering application. But uh, this instrument is uh, really simple in, in the idea. We want to know the, the differences in the height between A and B. We put this instru instrument uh, usually in the middle. Uh, between the two points uh, because uh, if you put uh, this in the middle of uh, in the um, in the middle of the distance between the two points uh, we can reduce uh, some error uh, in the vertical if, if uh, we don't put uh, the instrument really in the vertical position because uh, we want to realize a horizontal axis uh, and uh, to do this, we put the instrument along the vertical, the plumb line. So it's related to the gravity field. For this reason, we are measuring height related to the geoid, because we, are, we, we put our instrument along the um, line of force of the gravity field. And we, we realize a horizontal axis, and we put two rods uh, in the two point and we are going to read the number here in, uh, in this road and uh, in this other road and our special uh, number our symbols that uh, the people have studied to, to have a, um, a precise uh, uh, reading of the road it's not so easy but what we obtain is the differences by uh, these two measures, we obtain the difference, differences in the height between these two points. We, I, I don't put uh, the formula, but it's quite... Um, okay. Okay, it, it is very easy to obtain, to show that from this lecture we obtain the, the height of the point, uh, the differences in the height. And, uh, mm, okay, this for the altimetry. And we obtain differences, uh, it's important this con concept. Is a, is a, we have a rank deficiency, we saw, equal to one. What does this mean? What does this mean that we have a relative measurement between the point A and the point B. We don't know exactly the position, the height, sorry, the height of one of these points. We know just the relative uh, differences in the height. We are going to see also for the GPS, uh, I try to introduce this concept, how to fix the rank deficiency. That is mean I need a reference point. To know the height. If I say I am um, taller than you of uh, five centimeters, for example, we just know that you are uh, uh, taller than me of five centimeters. We don't know nothing about uh, one of the two heights. So, uh, but if you fix one of the two heights, we can obtain the other height. This is a simple example of rank deficiency and how we fix this rank, rank deficiency. And for the planimetric coordinate, we, we use a theodolite and triangulation. So theodolite measures angles, but now we have also instrument called total station. that are able or to measure with the electronic distance measurement to measure also distances between points. In the picture, in the picture I show very old instrument but now are really modern. They can um, perform the measure by themselves. They have motors, they can uh, uh, find the point that you want to measure and so on, a very sophisticated instrument and are also 
used for um, surveying application. But the basic concept is that we have separate, separate altimetric and planimetric when we, we do the measure. And uh, so it means that, uh, okay, altimetry is referred to the geoid and planimetric coordinate will be referred to the ellipsoid. This is uh, the implicit. <laughs> or if you want, in one of the other approximation of the hertz, uh, we, if uh, we, we, did, uh, we do some measure of the ICTP building, the Fermi building, I can imagine to be to use uh, as a, a planar surface, a reference surface, because we are uh, using a short, um, a, a narrow zone, a short area. But uh, <coughs> okay, when we increase the area of measurements, we have to in, to use a more appropriate approximation for the because from this measure the problem is that we measure angles and distance and by this we want to obtain coordinates for instance uh, uh, x y in a planimetric uh, or uh, in ellipsoidal latitude and longitude and uh, it is so you have to use uh, the geometry law and it is easier with uh, um, using regular surface this is the reason that we use for instance ellipsoid um, okay with these techniques, what we obtain, especially with GNSS, uh, uh, so with the Global Navigation Satellite System, what we obtain is uh, the three-dimensional positioning. We know with the one system, we have a three-dimensional uh, determination of the position, not, not separate uh, determination. With respect to an ellipsoid, so we have seen yesterday that we need to connect the ellipsoid to the geoid, the other important reference surface in many applications. Because uh, often we need uh, a height related to the geoid, not to the ellipsoid. But uh, with this technique, we have the three dimensional positioning of a point. Um, Okay, we can uh, have relative positioning between points, even if uh, these points are very far uh, from each other. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, we are going to see in detail the other characteristics, and I, I can skip. Uh, here are represented some of the most important, most used uh, global navigation satellite system. Uh, GPS was uh, created by uh, the, the Department of the Defense of the United States uh, at the in uh, in 70, 1970s. Uh, we have GLONASS that uh, were, uh, was um, developed by. Uh, Russia or ex um, okay Russia and uh, we have uh, now we have Galileo Galileo is uh, working and uh, but uh, by few years uh, we have uh, uh, we put the uh, minimum number of satellites to have uh, to, to to be able to use these techniques so we are going to see how this technique uh, uh, works work and uh, how many satellites we need. We need a minimum configuration of the satellite to work. So we are going to see. We have a cool data access uh, from Japan a compass from China. So, uh, these techniques are really global. These are global but are more focused on one part of the, the world. For instance, uh, the, in the compact uh, uh, system, 
um, is uh, the system is opt opt optimized to work on a Asia region, not all over the world. But we can use this data and we can record the data from the satellite of this constellation. It's not. Uh, um, it's better in this part of the world. It, it, it works better in this part of the world. There is differences between this system. I don't. Um, at the moment, we, we have no. For this uh, course, we see just uh, the GPS. Between one system to another, there are some differences related to the signal uh, signal that we are going to use. More or less. <coughs> All uh, the, the techniques uh, use uh, the same band of uh, frequency, more or less. Uh, in green, the GPS, and uh, violet, the Galileo, and red, the compact. So for example, this is uh, um, more or less uh, we have in the same band of the uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Uh, because we are going to see why we need uh, this use the signal from this with this uh, type of frequency, but uh, there can be differences between one technique to another. We can uh, have a, a modulation of the signals that change satellite by satellite or have uh, other techniques. The China system. Uh, use different satellites, just a just a scenario satellite, uh, as a, not just a scenario satellite. So it's different how they perform the techniques, and of course the new techniques, for instance Galileo, um, is um, has been studied using the experience that we had have uh, collected with the GPS. GPS was the first one, so we are realized, for instance, uh, that uh, using two frequencies is it, not sufficient in some condition we're going to see. So Galileo was uh, created using three frequencies, <coughs> at least, so, and so on. So we are going to see better uh, in detail uh, you using the G uh, GPS lesson. But more or less, the principle is the same. It's changed some technical uh, um, characteristics of the technique. Okay, satellite laser range. In satellite laser range, um, is a, a technique. Uh, is a whole technique. So we we use uh, this te tec technique. The, uh, before GPS or was born more, more around these uh, years. And uh, <coughs> we have some uh, antenna, the, this is a fixed antenna in the Vexel uh, uh, station, Vexel in, uh, in Germany. Uh, and um, in Vexel uh, there is an important astronomic uh, observatory so they use uh, different techniques, uh, different uh, antenna to observe uh, the, uh, the space. And uh, mm, this is a fixed antenna to observe this type of satellite. So it's a very large, so we have a largest one, a largest, no, uh, I, I, I'm not sure about, uh, now we have a largest two, but uh, Sorry, I'm a long time that I don't uh, check uh, exactly the characteristic of the satellite la laser range, but uh, it's just to show you the, how this system works. Um, this uh, satellite is covered by mirror that reflect uh, the signal coming from uh, the, um, the ground station, and uh, this station recorded uh, the uh, round trip, the, the time to, for the signal to go to the satellite and to be reflected. Uh, analyzing this uh, from this uh, uh, measure of the time, knowing the velocity of the propagation of the electromagnetic waves, of course we can obtain the distance between satellite and station. Uh, it's used just in Usually we have fixed stations, so we can compute this position 
in a in a good way in a in a correct way so using this type of measure we can record the the changing in this in this positioning and um, sometimes there are some uh, uh, antenna that can move and for a special experiment you can put in different places but the system is quite expensive so, and uh, the antennas are quite big so it's not so uh, used uh, it's not so easy to, to move um, and uh, cover the world with this type of system but we are going to see that uh, this uh, technique is uh, really important in geodesy we are going to see later why it's uh, for the definition of the reference system another technique uh, is uh, the VLBI, uh, VLBI, very long baseline interferometry. They use uh, uh, natural radio sources from Quasar and uh, they cut this, uh, we have uh, some uh, antenna all around the world. Uh, in Italy we have three antennas but uh, the coverage over the world is not so dense. Uh, in Europe we have uh, quite a lot of antenna in uh, in uh, North and South America, but it's not uh, so diffuse because these are very huge antenna with a diameter very important. So it's a very expensive technique, and this te this antenna are shared with the astrophysical community. There is a planning how to use this antenna because we need uh, the signal of uh, these uh, radio sources. So all the antenna have to be directed in the di this direction for a, 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 a fixed period. So we, we need to, to share this uh, experiment at the time with the, the astrophysics community. And, uh, <coughs> It's an interferometry technique, so the, the signal coming from very far from the father arrived, you can see like a, 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 okay. you can see that these uh, rays are parallel because it's coming from very far. So they arrived in, the, in this uh, two point of the Earth at different time. And measure these differences in the arriving time, we can have information about the baseline, the distance between the two antennas. So we can record the movement between one antenna to another antenna. antenna. For instance, due to the tonic movement of, uh, of the crust. Um, okay. May I ask a question? Um, what about the um, resolution of this data? I mean, the changes in distance, uh, measure meters, kilometers, which are the order? No, uh, no, no. We, uh, these are techniques uh, with very precise. So we 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 have uh, some centimeter and uh, less okay. uh, are very very precise techniques so as interferometry uh, yes it's a, a type of interferometry but the precision is like for like for the gps okay. of course it depends how many data you have or how you process the data but are really precise because we need these techniques vlbi uh, slr to the definition of the reference system I'm going to see. And we need a reference system well defined if we want to have a, a given um, precision for the position, and for instance, with GPS or with uh, other techniques. So are very precise. Okay, now, when we speak about positioning, we need to, to speak about uh, a reference system when I, uh, you know from uh, your previous study of course when you also you are young when you have to draw uh, in a Cartesian plane uh, something you fix to asics 
so you fix uh, your references. The same for uh, the posi geodetic positioning. You need a reference system and you need to design a coordinate system correlated to this one. So, okay, this is uh, the simple one. <laughs> we need to fix two asics in a, in a bidimensional uh, case and uh, an origin. And in this uh, reference system we can define different coordinate systems. We have not, uh, we don't have to confuse a, coordinate, a reference system with a coordinate system. Well, uh, for instance, this case we can represent uh, the position of the point P using Cartesian coordinate X and Y or otherwise using polar coordinates the distance between the point and uh, uh, the origin of the, coordinate of the reference system and for instance an angle and we, ha we are in the same coordinate um, reference system but it's changed uh, the system uh, how to obtain the coordinate, but are correlated. We have a formula to move from one coordin coordinate system to another one. So this is uh, really important because when uh, we have a, a co a ref the, uh, we fix the reference system, we can change the coordinate, speaking about Cartesian or uh, or latitude longitude, Cartesian coordinate or latitude or longitude, but uh, the reference system is the same. We, we give uh, the same information using the two different types of um, coordinates, but the, informa the information is the same about the position of the point. I have a question. Yes? I think that uh, of course the YC should be the same. Yeah. The second one should be signed. Yeah. Uh, yes. Of course. Yes, I'm going to. Yes, I'm going to go. I think I know. Yes, of course. Excuse me. Yes. So, for example, the definition of the um, reference systems also depends on uh, how we define the unit measurements. And uh, if the system is inertial or not, uh, you know, these are the things. Or coordinate means just uh, all the mm -hmm. points. The, the unit uh, at the moment is not taken into account. In the definition we are going to see, I need just to say where are the two axes and the region. Okay. And after, okay, when uh, you. <coughs> we use. Uh, we define a reference system, we, we have to follow some rules and these rules are, have to be clear so we can uh, share information, okay? But uh, the unit of measure, uh, the unit, uh, uh, of measure yeah, is uh, not the, uh, the point okay. now. Okay, I'm going to correct, or you can <laughs> correct, of course, thank you. Um, okay. Positioning. What is uh, the problem? Okay, I, uh, this is a, an, an example in, uh, from a theoretical point of view, it's easy. I fix uh, two asics in the, in, the, in the paper, it's really easy. I fix two asics, the origin, and so on. When uh, we, we do measure, uh, where are our asses? Where is the reference system? It's not so easy to, to re realize this. Because, for instance, um, now we speak here for a two-dimensional case. Uh, if uh, we have a point P, and this uh, is uh, our theoretical uh, reference system, what, uh, for instance, with the theodolite, with the, this uh, traditional instrument, we want to measure this angle, for instance. Um, Okay, what uh, we don't know are the coordinates of this point. So, we can co obtain the coordinate of this point uh, having this measure if uh, we know 
the position of another point in this reference system. For instance, if we know the position of, um, of the point F and we know it's the coordinate of uh, this point and we measure this angle, for instance this direction is along the, uh, the north direction and so on, we know all this direction, we can obtain the coordinates of the point P in this reference system. It's clear? If we don't know this, how we can connect this point to a reference system? For instance, if I put my reference system in this room, and it says that this point here in the intersection of these two lines is my origin, and along this wall I put the x-axis along perpendicular to this and uh, go through this point, I put the y-axis, we have to set our reference frame. But if now measure, uh, for instance, the distance in between this point and this point, and I want to know the coordinate of this in this reference, how can I connect this measure with this? I have instruments to measure this, but are not in this reference. System. For geophysical, um, geodetic and geophysical application, I need to, to know the coordinate of point in well-defined reference system. In this way, I can um, share my information, I can compare information my, um, with other researchers, other, other group, but also uh, it's important for me is if I want, want to check uh, uh, a point over time. I have to really know what is uh, uh, what is, with respect. Uh, um, uh, no. uh, I have uh, to be uh, to really know uh, in which uh, reference system I know the position at uh, one time. Okay. So if I measure the distance between. Th these two chairs, I need other measure to connect, for instance, this point to the reference system. Probably it's easier to connect, to measure this point with the region, so to connect this point to my reference system, and so on. So this is just to, um, so what is important uh, is to have a, a position of a known, uh, of, um, of point on the Earth or also in the space. I can also take uh, as a reference some uh, extraterrestrial point. And uh, we are going to see how we can obtain this. Uh, just a moment, uh, I put this is... Mm. Okay, every time when uh, we speak we change, um, we prepare a talk and when you talk uh, in your mind we start with a direction that is the, uh, for me is uh, often different from the, <laughs> the sequence in the slide. I'm going to now skip this slide, I'm going to, to speak uh, after about the slides. So, what we need now is a reference system and we have seen why. We need a reference frame. A reference frame, what is? So, a reference system is the mathematical, the conceptual definition of this reference system. In the planimetric case, I need two axes, possible uh, ortho orthogonal axis and origin and define our, this, of course, this reference system is uh, orientated in the space, of course, in the plane. But what you, we need for practical application is what we call a reference frame. We need some point that is our the materialization in, uh, in, of the, our reference system, for instance. If uh, I know the position of this point, this is a reference point for me. And knowing this position, I can obtain the position of the other point, the coordinates of the other point. This uh, represents 
uh, a materialization, a realization of my uh, physical realization of my reference system. That now is just a definition, a mathematical definition. So these are also called fiducial points uh, and could be point on the hertz or also star, quasar and so on. So we, we need some points that uh, I really can identify this point because I know the coordinate of this in this reference system. And another definition is conventional. We, we speak about conventional reference system or conventional reference frame because uh, we want, want to get all the scenes related to the frame or to the reference system are known, are well defined. We don't, uh, and it can be shared with the other people, are uh, like a rule, convention between uh, the community. So in satellite geodesy, we have two types of two systems. Uh, we need two systems. We need uh, a celestial reference system, ICRS, and a frame. You can see the acronym are more or less the same. When we speak of a system, we put an S. When we speak about frame, we put an F. We are also here. Okay. So, uh, celestial reference system, we need this is a space fifth inertial system for the description of satellite motion. Because uh, we have satellites that are moving, the Earth is moving, so we need something more stable in our cell to, to, to check, to control the relative position between satellite and Earth. And we need also a refer terrestrial reference system and frame. This system is uh, related to the, to the Earth, it's uh, rotating with the Earth. And um, it's, a, it's a use to give the positioning um, of the station on the ground, on the hertz, to, money, uh, to check, for instance, the relative position from one point to another point on the earth, or also in the space, if I use, uh, okay, in the hertz. Okay. How we define a, a, a international uh, terrestrial reference frame or, or system? We use, uh, no, we, I use F, but it's better to use S. Sometime uh, I'm going to check. Uh, I'm going to correct. Uh, you can correct your notes and going to, to correct the slide. It's S because we are, we are st uh, speaking about uh, the, the definition of this. So uh, we, need, uh, we need to define the origin uh, and this origin of the, our system will be defined using SLR, SLR technique. This is one of the reasons that I talk about these techniques. And we need a scale. Uh, we, we used to, um, to define uh, the scale orientation of uh, our system, you use uh, the two techniques, SLR and VLBI solution, especially. We are going to see that now. Uh, I speak also reframe. Sorry, I was uh, speaking. So to define the origin of our reference frame, we use uh, the satellite laser ranging, the SLR technique. Um, <coughs> the, the center motion, the, the center of the heart, um, it's not fixed, we have to, to well define this uh, position. And uh, one of the techniques uh, used is a satellite la laser ranging. Because uh, if you remember, the techniques is measured just on the, the distance between 
the satellite and the Hertz uh, using well-defined uh, antenna fixed on the Hertz. So it's more stable in the definition of the, these uh, differences. Mm. Okay. To connect, we need. We have seen that we need to reference the system, the celestial, the terrestrial, and we need to put in uh, to com not combine to to put in. To connect, uh, to know the relationship between uh, terrestrial and celestial reference system and frame. And to do this, uh, we use uh, especially VLBI techniques. Okay, this is a, um, and this uh, connection is, may, uh, is, uh, um, is uh, done using Earth orientation parameters, and these are provided by the, by this uh, uh, international health rotation reference system service, i.e. her health. Okay, this is a, uh, I don't want to go in detail about this uh, quantity, how we fix uh, the, the reference system from the theoretical point of view. It's just to say to to say you that when uh, we have uh, um, an international terrestrial reference system or frame, we, we have uh, the, the, the um, geodetic community, uh, community put together a lot of techniques uh, to have uh, the most stable and uh, well-defined uh, definition of this system. It's quite, uh, uh, we need time to see uh, <laughs> in a rigorous way uh, all this quantity uh, but uh, is not uh, um, the aim of these courses it's just to give you an idea all the techniques are important and uh, the reference system is really well determined and checked by international association like uh, the IERS that give uh, us uh, the parameter to check uh, all of these quantities, the regions, the center, motion, and so on. And, um, and this, the, the requirement to have this system, the service uh, will be done, uh, you can see from the age, when uh, the GPS started to work uh, really, to be really functional. And uh, more or less in that period, we started with uh, we have a complex GPS system, and so we need we realize the community realized that we have to take really in consideration all this uh, quantity. Um, okay, when we speak about frame, uh, we have seen that we have a, a station on the Earth where we know the coordinate uh, of this uh, station and but uh, the earth is moving for tectonic and geophysical phenomena so uh, we using the two th these techniques we can estimate the crustal movement the movement of the earth, the cr uh, crust earth um, and we have to take in, co in, uh, in account for this because all my reference uh, fiducial station, fiducial point, and the movement, and I have to know this. In fact, we are going to see. Okay, this is the tonic plate motion. That uh, is a whole new feature now that we have more station. I have to to check to is uh, for 2003. Now uh, I have to. Uh, to change the picture with the modern one, but it's important that uh, we can, uh, you can see the plate uh, and you can see the different vectors of uh, the velocity of the point on uh, each plate and it is a demonstration of the tectonic plate motion, of course, uh, different uh, relative motion between the plate and we can see the different direction of the arrow. In, in average we have more or less the same direction. Of course when we have some more complicated uh, uh, geophysical tectonic zone in the boundary we have different move, uh, movement. But each 
theory it's quite, uh, we have more or less the same uh, coordinates, the same direction. Of course, uh, the plate is mo moving on a um, spheric surface, uh, so it's uh, not a linear moving map, but uh, we have uh, to move with the uh, rotation, with the spatter uh, rotation pole. Okay, so <coughs> we have seen that with the three techniques, we can, uh, these techniques can be used to define our references frame, uh, to, to, mo to know the position of the geocenter of the center of the Hertz. We, we can connect the two different frames and we can also measure the, the movement of the point of the crust, Earth crust. Okay, now we are going to see in detail what is a terrestrial reference system. Um, okay, it's a system rotating with the Hertz. Uh, during its uh, journal mo motion. Um, okay, we have uh, uh, is defined by three axes, uh, and we put the region in the, the center. Uh, this is the reason that we have to to check uh, this uh, position using, for instance, the SLR SLR techniques, and we have. Uh, <coughs> Of course, uh, the three axes are defined using some uh, con convention, some definition, and uh, this definition are referred to this uh, time and this definition. So we put uh, the, mm, the y axis in the conventional equatorial plane defined in uh, 1984, and we put the um, x axis in this. Uh, plane uh, perpendicular to the y-axis and the z-axis according to this uh, uh, position. So the property, uh, the property uh, we have already seen, three-dimensional orthogonal axis uh, with the uh, orientation of, the, the, of this ax axis the given by, by the Bureau International de l'Eure at uh, this time is correlating with the Hertz. Um, we is a not net rotation condition for horizontal motion. Well, we are going to see what is a not net a non-net rotation condition in the velocity. We we'll see later. We I have a, a session on, on this definition, and we have a, the region in the, the centric, and uh, we consider all the masses of the Earth, including ocean and the atmosphere. Uh, we have to be careful about uh, this definition, the center of the mass or the body center, the, ma the center of the figures of the hairs are, do di are two different concepts. Near here we had the, the center of the mass, including all these masses, because uh, um, okay, it's related to the movement of the hairs, to so its gravity field. Okay, the measure are given in meter and in uh, second according to international uh, system. Okay. Now uh, we speak about reference frame. We have already seen that we I am going to repeat some concepts that I already uh, told you. We have defined a reference system. The, uh, given the position of the axis, the position of the region of the earth, and so on. Now we need to to see this in the earth, okay? Because uh, we know that uh, the x-axis is the long, is the plan equatorial uh, plane defined uh, by the Bureau International de l'Eur in that. Uh, Time, but where is this? Uh, how can I connect my measure with this? Like in the example that we have done in this uh, uh, class, in this room. And uh, <coughs> to do this, we need to to, um, real, uh, to create a network of benchmark, like uh, this point in the class. Uh, the benchmark 
uh, well know, uh, we know the coordinates of this bench benchmark in the system that we have defined. For a set of, uh, so for a set of geodetic sites, we need to know the position, x, y, z, the velocity of the point because uh, we it's a dynamic uh, datum. Datum means uh, it's a Latin word. It's a uh, it's mean uh, references. When uh, often in geodesy we speak about datum instead of reference frame. It's mean uh, is uh, the set of these uh, uh, well-known coordinates, uh, a point with uh, well-known coordinates and velocity. And uh, I have to to know this. Uh, because it's dynamic data, datum, I, um, I know to, to give a, a, a epoch, to know the position and a given epoch and uh, the velocity at this epoch, we are going to see. So, um, because I have to compute knowing the velocity, what is uh, the predicted velocity uh, position of a point at a given time. And uh, of associate covariance information means variance and covariance info matrix information. You can find this in the site, website, ITRF. Um, in these sites are reported all <coughs> all uh, the, the references uh, frame that we are using, frame, all the different re relaxation. And uh, after we are, we are going to see, oh, we can see now this website. <coughs> okay. You can see, if you look at the ITRF solution, you see a, a list, you can read this, uh, I can uh, zoom this view, zoom in. So it's better, I think. Okay. Yes, you can see a list of uh, ITRF, it means a list of different solutions available. Because uh, the, the reference uh, frame is so important uh, to have an accurate reference frame that uh, it is important to, to update uh, continuously, update continuously, no, you can see some different time, to update this uh, solution. So you can see that we have uh, um, uh, the acronym is ITRF plus the year. This is the RF uh, a year to say this is different by this solution. By this solution. Okay, so over time we change the reference frame, but it is important we're well, going to see when uh, we speak about uh, times GPS time series analysis, we see again this concept, concept that uh, all this uh, I can move from one uh, reference frame to another reference frame, frame using the transformation parameters transformation parameters between ITRF 2014 and previous solution. You can see these are, okay, is, uh, we are going to see in the lesson about um, GPS time series, but uh, is, uh, you have to see that uh, our frame is like, um, you can consider this like a solid, a rigid solid. Okay, we know that we have, we have uh, 
relat uh, relative movement, but now forget for this. We take into account using the velocity. We, you, if you fix at a, an epoch, you have a rigid bo uh, body given by all the coordinates of the point, They're like a discretization of the Earth's surface. And we, we have a realization, for instance, in uh, ITRF um, um, 2008. Now we are using the ITRF 2014. So if you have a solution, that mean coordinate in that uh, frame, we can transform this uh, coordinate in ITRM 14 using a, rot, uh, a seven parameter transformation, an element transformation, where we translate, rotate and eventually scale our uh, solution, our network to combine the two networks and put in the same reference frame. We are going to see in the, it's a very simple. Uh, in uh, the lesson when we speak about GPS 10 series, how we deal with this problem. If you have a GPS 10 series, we, we can see the changes in the reference frame and we have to correct or to put all the solution or the coordinate in the same reference frame. So this is the reason because it's important to be in a well-defined reference frame because I, I can correct my data, I can adjust my data for the change in the reference system, in the reference frame. I can check, I know the paramet transformation parameter to move from one reference frame to another reference frame. As you can see, we have not just seven parameters, but 14, because um, we use also, uh, are also estimate the rates in the each parameters. Also the parameters between one reference to another, the, the three translation, three rotation parameter and the scale factor change over time. So we introduce also the rate. Okay, so in this you can uh, uh, have a look of this site, you have a lot of information about uh, uh, general concept, uh, there is a lot of things that uh, I ah Do Dory sorry is another judicial techniques used uh, for uh, reference frame definition. I I don't speak about this. Uh, I use I speak about just the most important techniques. We now okay. I think that we have some unit to see. For instance, okay, it's not that the <laughs> the, the link uh, doesn't work. Um, okay, and ah, another important thing is that uh, was uh, in, the, in this list uh, is a before. You, okay, you can try again. General concept. Okay. In one of the, uh, in the previous, uh, no. before when I click on Doris, we have a list of techniques. There was a GPS, VHBR, SLR, LLR mean lunar laser ranges. On the surface of the moon, there are some retro reflector to, to do the same that we have done with, um, with the artificial satellite, with the larger satellite. Is that to say, on the moon, we can perform, using the moon, we, uh, we can do measure. The, but I don't know, now the link it doesn't work. Before, yeah, okay, there is some problem there. They are um, changing something in the repository. Um, okay, so you have the different solution, transformation parameter between one solution to another solution. Ah, the uh, network description, this is important. Uh, I need a map, I, I like to have a map.
player. This is a list and I like a list. Mm -hmm. Okay, this you can uh, get coordinate, for instance, you, you can uh, uh, choose in a refer international refer a terrestrial reference frame and you can have uh, uh, mm, the position, full kinematic model, probably, mm, I don't never try, I, don't, I, don't ne I never use this, uh, this facility, I have my, my routine to do this. But uh, I want to, uh, it's, uh, it's important to see the map, uh, ah, site map, okay. And a site, a website map, not site, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> website. Um, well, I, I remember that sometimes there is a map with all the stations that we use, uh, all the stations are distributed all over the world. Uh, there are site in Mm, uh, mm, okay, I probably you have to to say what uh, is not the map that uh, is to do computation. Okay. Uh, is is a I I I looking for a map with the, all the station that you use. Uh, select a list of sites with that. Um, Okay, and probably they are working on this uh, service selected for it. Okay, it's not important. We can you can um, try at home and there is a map where you can see all of the GPS station used for this computer for the definition of the ITRF. They have VLBI station. They have uh, SLR station. Of course, for the GPS network, we have a very dense network of stations all over around the world. But for the definition of the reference station, we don't use all the stations. We remove the, the station along, along the boundary between plate or with a very local uh, um, geophysical characteristic uh, are not used. We need a stable station. Okay, so in the middle of the plate and so on, not at the border. There is some stations that are on the border of the plate. For instance, in Italy, we have an important station, Matera. It's in South Italy where we have VLBI, SLR and GPS station. But we have a high deformation rate because in the boundary between Eurasia and Africa plate. But it's a very, uh, we have a very long time series for this station. So sometimes you use, sometimes is, uh, you have to use with, uh, for this type of application uh, with uh, put attention, of course, because we have local deformation. And uh, sometimes you, you have to change the ITRF solution, not only because you improved your knowledge, um, for instance, the definition of the axis or uh, the definition of the zero-center motion, but also because some stations can stop to work. We have instrument and sometimes the instrument uh, broken and you have to fix or to change the instrument. So, but if you use uh, some fiducia station, you need to have uh, stations that are working, especially for uh, geophysical uh, for satellite geodetic uh, application. When uh, in the past, uh, if you, uh, for instance, in this example, it's important to, if uh, this is the origin of my reference system, I put, uh, for instance, a mark in. Um, a benchmark, sorry, a benchmark in the ground and I do measure and now I know the coordinate of this point and I decide that the quality of the knowledge on this coordinate is so high that I can put a benchmark. Benchmark is a sign in the ground 
where I can uh, found uh, reading a monography, a book, a campaign book, and say, okay, where is this far, uh, a benchmark? I can found it. It's uh, like a protected point, uh, but sometimes these points are removed for one reason or another. It's like the Judaic monument. It's like Judaic monument. Yes, yes, it's a Judaic monument or benchmark. It's a depend as you use. The term is a Judaic monument. Sometimes are very huge uh, in the past. Now, now is huge because you put, for instance, a GPS antenna, and so all the instruments you put, uh, you, you have to put, for instance, a little box where I put all the to protect all the instruments and so on. So in the past, if I have a benchmark, okay, uh, someone has done the measure and obtain the coordinate of this point and stop. We don't have instrument in, uh, above this point. When I, I want to compute, for instance, the distance between this point and this to have the coordinate of this chart, I'm going, I'm going to, um, to put my instrument again uh, above this benchmark, okay? Or this geodetic monument. With the, the satellite techniques, we, we need benchmarks that are working continuously over time. That is, they, we need a GPS antenna receiver that are working all over the time, for 20 hours every day. Uh, and sometimes this uh, doesn't work. But if this uh, doesn't work, I cannot connect my measure with this point. We are going to see that we need to connect uh, to use a relative positioning to reduce uh, the, a lot of uh, noise uh, error in the GPS measurement. So if uh, uh, a given point you realize that a lot of station <coughs> in your solution are doesn't work or you have to remove one station to put another so you have, uh, uh, we are going to see, we, we can see this uh, um, this effect in the time series, probably it's better to remove this station from the set of fiducial station. Uh, I don't see you, uh, I'll show you. ITF solution available. Um, okay, we try to... I mean, I, I'm looking for a, a, a file that uh, e, it was easy to see. Uh, Cinex is not so easy to see. Is a Cinex is a standard? Is a standard uh, format to s exchange a solution coordinate coordinates and covariance of the coordinates and other parameters. But it's not so easy to, to see. I, I prefer if uh, there is some um, text file easier, probably this one. In this case, we have all the separate solution. And uh, no, OK. OK. So we, we have seen that the reference frame is given by the name of the station, the coordinates, the velocity of an epoch. So we need to know uh, in the header of the file there is uh, the name of, uh, is reported uh, the reference epoch. So if uh, in 2014, I suppose that, uh, no, I don't remember uh, exactly, but if uh, the reference epoch is 2014, now to know the position now I have to compute uh, uh, the, the velocity, uh, I have to use the velocity to show, the, to compute the movement between 2018 and 2019 and so on. Okay, you, I invited you to, to have, uh, to see this uh, website uh, and find uh, other, ah, this uh, is, uh, was already open. <laughs> yes, this is a reason because it doesn't work, the link is already open. Okay. No, window. Okay, 
we have talked about uh, reference frame, uh, that is uh, the materialization of a reference system, and uh, we know we need also coordinate system. And in GNS uh, we use uh, two coordinate systems, the Cartesian coordinate, ellipsoidal Cartesian coordinate, that is mean uh, that the reference surface is an ellipsoidal surface, or uh, ellipsoidal geographical, geographical coordinate, latitude, longitude, and age. Small age is means that is referred to the ellipsoid. So it's a geometric definition, it's not related to the joid, do you remember for the last lesson? So <coughs> this, is a this is a reference surface uh, we, from the point P on the topographic surface, we can uh, compute along the normal to the ellipsoid, the arc length give us uh, the H coordinate. And after we have the definition of the longitude and the latitude. Okay, with respect to a reference meridian of uh, go to Greenwich uh, meridian plane. Okay, and of course we can uh, we can uh, transfer our coordinate in the latitude, longitude, and h from ellipsoidal to Cartesian using this formula. The inverse uh, can be done, but it's, um, uh, you, you have to do some approximation because as uh, you can see, for the definition of the H, you need the, the latitude. And in the definition of the latitude, you have the H. So you can solve this. There is a lot of routine that can transform your coordinate, but you need to do some approximation. But uh, it's quite easy. There is a, really a lot of uh, routine to transform coordinate. But it's important that if I have latitude, longitude, a h in ITRF 40, 14, for instance, ITRF 14, I can obtain using this formula Cartesian coordinate is y z again in ITRF 14. I don't change the datum, I don't change the reference frame, it's just a transformation, coordinate transformation. Uh, usually, okay, uh, sorry, the figure is not so, is it, okay, it's a really clear, I take from my old uh, slide, okay. One thing, uh, when we use Cartesian coordinates, uh, is not to, uh, and I take a point P, in uh, this coordinate are mixed the altrimetric and planimetric information about the point. So sometimes it's better to use, instead of uh, Cartesian or um, geographical coordinate, what we call local coordinate system. So you, we put a, a plane a tangent in the point P to, to the ellipsoid with the white axis in the north direction and the x axis in the east perpendicular to this. And um, okay, for the, the, the uh, for the H uh, definition is perpendicular of this plane along the normal to, to the ellipsoid. Okay, yes, in fact it's uh, zeta parallel uh, is uh, related to the, um, to the normal to the ellipsoid. And often uh, we can use this so we can separate, we, we have a technique that give us information 3D information, but uh, uh, for in many applications we need to separate the planimetric information by the altimetric information because we have different phenomena and to do this we can just uh, use a coordinate transformation and also for this there is a um, formula, it's like a rotation of the our um, <coughs> coordinate system but also for this uh, you can find a lot of uh, routine uh, well tested the routine to perform this tra transformation okay 
one thing that is important is about not net rotation frame. ITRF is a non net uh, rotation frame. Um, It means that uh, we, mm, the motion of each, of each plate with respect to the weight, I am going to read it, the weight average of all plate over the world. We have a system that is rotating on the earth. The not, uh, not uh, net rotation frame means this. We have a uh, reference system frame that is rotating and uh, the motion, we, we impose a, a condition on the, the motion of, of the plate. The absolute motion of the plate um, is really col connected, is close to the values is, uh, if uh, we obtain comparing uh, this velocity with the velocity of the plate with respect to the hot spot uh, point uh, on the hertz. So in this sense it's called absolute uh, velocity. But it uh, is a, a way to to control all the uh, velocity uh, of the plates. It's a, what we do in geophysics. We, we, it's not important the absolute velocity of the plate in many applications. We need, for uh, our study, we need the relative solution, uh, the relative velocity between points. We are we are going to see that we are going to remove. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, the movement of the plate. We are going to, to, uh, to check the coordinate with respect to a fixed reference frame. So if you read uh, an article, a paper, often you, you find, for instance, for uh, um, California, an actor in um, California, in USA, you see these are the velocity with the, the fixed North America because in the, part, the North American part of the United States is more stable. So it is interesting to see the relative velocity of this point with respect to the, um, uh, the North part of the America. For instance, I put, uh, uh, I had a few times, so I look at my PC. This is uh, the Friuli Venezia Giulia, this region in Italy, this is Trieste. These are the absolute velocity. If you if you see, are about uh, mm, uh, okay. two centimeter less than two centimeter for year. In the absolute velocity, the velocity that I can obtain by I, for instance an I, ITRF solution. Uh, I don't know. Probably now one station is an ITRF. Uh, I'm not sure so if, uh, the, f the station, the mountains in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia or, or Veneto, I don't, I don't know, the, uh, Friuli. And uh, if uh, we remove, uh, this is a, a, a whole solution where the station are working for a few times, so don't study this from a geophysical point of view. It's a very preliminary solution when uh, the station started to work. These are the GPS station. If I remove the movement due to the, pla uh, to the Eurasian plate, I can obtain relative movement. And for many applications to study the fall, the, fall, the kinematic of the fold and so on, we have to remove this average movement due to the tectonics. So this is uh, the differences between fixed reference frame or non-net uh, uh, solution. Non-net solution is like an absolute uh, solution that is uh, related really to the plate. And so uh, this is for Italy, for instance. So uh, sorry, it's uh, very dense, but you can see that in this part we have a higher velocity, especially in the south, we have the boundary between Eurasian plate and uh, Africa plate. And uh, for instance, the um, western part of the Ita North Italian is uh, at a lower value than the other part. Or oh, there is also some solution, we, we, uh, here we have the Apennine um, mountains, uh, there is a, a difference, a gradient between the velocity from this part of the Apennine and the other part of the Apennines. 
you uh, starting from this type of map you can do some uh, geophysical investigation when you have all the error more or less uh, in the same direction and uh, you cannot record the differences in, uh, you can see this error you find millimeter per year so the relative movement is uh, some millimeter per year less than five so it's not easy to check to uh, this velocity using absolute uh, or non net uh, rotation solution. Okay, um, how can uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to finish uh, at least this slide. How can uh, we obtain a plane uh, fixed uh, reference frame? We have to know the uh, to use some model of plate motion uh, movement. Okay, I think that we can stop uh, say after.